Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And something really interesting happened the other day. The Eisners decided that comic book journalism isn't important enough to get its own category. Whoops. I didn't even know they had their own category. That's how, you they know. They did. They did. I mean, I knew about the Eisners and everything, obviously, but I, I never thought they had their own category because it kind of seems kind of like, um, I don't want to say incestuous, but kind of like that. Like, no, who, you, you it's not kind of. It's not kind of. Who kissed our ass the most? Yeah, pretty much. Um, so this is this is interesting. What they're doing is they are actually rolling the comic book journalism category into the memoir, like published memoir category or something. That doesn't make any sense. And I think what they're doing is they're basically getting rid of the category without technically getting rid of the category, but they're getting rid of it, I think, because they even realize that comic book journalism is lacking that's like the biggest understatement it's it's corrupt it's failing it's dying the people that are doing it right now have actually led the comic book industry astray for many many years and uh, here we are where people are you know uh, losing money publishers are losing money people are losing their houses losing jobs everybody thought things were fine because the journalist set was fine it's not fine Comic shops are shutting down. That's not fine. So mm -hmm. don't reward these people for lying to you. I know. That's what I said. That's what I don't get. Okay. So let's talk about this. Before you get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture, news, views, and rants. Guys, you get woohoo if you do. Woohoo. Uh, go out to shopclownfish.com where you can buy our graphic novels, including Crimson Wren Volume 1. And previously on Clownfish TV, these are completed books. They're in stock in hand, ready to go. And no, no comic book journalists uh, we'll cover our comics, which is so funny, even though we had an agent and everything for Crimson Run back in the day. We're not part of that. Uh, clip ironically, uh, Heidi McDonald did cover Crimson Run. She did way, way back when we were pitching it. She did. And we, then, we were doing originally a, a Kickstarter, which ended up we had to shut down for someone being scammy. But it was. Yeah, it was a lot. But, but she was actually a fan of the project. And now that we're the wrong kind of people, we don't get any press. But that's OK. Yeah. We actually have a bigger audience uh, just doing we stuff ourselves. Press. We are the press too, and the publisher. You know, we're we're everything. We are all the Jedi. Um, but there's there's no purpose for comic book journalists anymore. There, so many of these websites have shut down. Mm -hmm. And and the thing is, is when you have a niche like like comics, like the only way you're going to get traffic to a, a news site about comic books is if people are actually interested in comic books, and they're not. They're not interested in Western comic books anymore. Everybody's moved on. They're not buying them. That's why shops are going out of business. Um, the journalists are actually driving people away, actively driving people away from comics because we've fallen into the same trap that the gaming journos fell into where everybody I don't like, it's comics mm -hmm. games. They're awful Nazis. They were calling Mark. Shun them. Yeah, shun them. They were calling for Mark Miller to get shunned because he was calling these people cancel pigs. And some of these journalists are, they're, you know, the prime bacon. They're Miss Piggy. Prime they're, bacon. <laughs> they're Sorry. like the the greasiest of the pigs. They some are of them are Canadian bacon, but you know. Some of them are Canadian bacon. Yeah, they're, they're people who are actively involved and they're supposed to be working as journalists. They're supposed to be objective and uh, mostly removed from the scene, be able to take their personal feelings out of it. They would, uh, you know, g paint a very different picture of the comic book industry than where things actually were. They would change the... Uh, narrative to suit uh, their needs, their whims, support their feelings and ideology. Uh, they would skip over stories that painted their friends in a bad light. Well, the posers were turkey bacon. Turkey bacon. Mm -hmm. the, That's ones, they, the ones that put out flops, that, that was turkey bacon. It's better than Nazi bacon. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, come on. But like, yeah, so Mark Miller, you know, he was kind of like, he's too big to cancel, but they have canceled. The comic book journalists have canceled so many people. And they've been involved in canceling and whisper networks and all shit. It's proven. It's been proven. And uh, now they're kind of running scared. And I think what's going on is that the Eisners, they don't even want to get into that because uh, Mark Miller is correct. He said that, you know, YouTubers have, have basically replaced 
the comic book journos. Podcasters have replaced comic book journalists. A lot of the sites that started out as independently owned comic book fan sites, like Comic Book Resources, which is now CBR, a Which actually farm. won this category a few times. It did. Back in the day, they actually did a pretty good job. And that's where Rich Johnson came from, was, was Comic Book Resources. And then he spun it off into his own site at, at uh, Bleeding Cool. But really, there's only like two or three sites left. I do need to yeah. correct you on one thing. Hmm. Uh, it is not Nazi bacon. That is so old. It is now Nazi jerky. Nazi jerky. Oh my God. It is. It is. It's Nazi jerky. I could just see like Josh Gates doing a thing and it like opens up the, the box of that's Nazi gold. Shit. It's just not Nazi jerky. Mm-hmm. That's all it is. Um, yeah. But like there's what, what, why would you reward these people? That's why I think they're doing, I think they're trying to like, plus I think, also, they're going to look at this like, do we really want to open this up? Because then we're going to have to open it up to YouTubers and podcasters and people that, you know, we don't like that we think are comics gay or whatever. So let's just like get rid of it all together. It, but it's so unimportant that it's not even worth mentioning. This is it. it's, it's, just, it's just not even like no one's really caring except for the ones that are that were thinking they were going to get nominated or win. Most people don't care. Or you're part of the group that was the Whisper Network that was using the journalists to cancel people. Yeah. And other than that, people were like, wait, like me. Like, there was a category for that? (laughs) Yeah, there was. Um, I mean, you go out to uh, the Reddit, uh, comic books Reddit, and they're like, where do you even get comic book news anymore? Like, Wizard Magazine's not here. Like, a lot of these websites just don't exist anymore. Um, Sketch, uh, David Harbour's around, but, like, there really isn't much out there. You've got Heidi. You've got Rich. You've got uh, a handful of like smaller sites. And then, then you've got the sites like Newsarama that got bought up by some corporation. Like Newsarama and Comic Book Resources were the two biggest for the longest time. And neither one of them talk about comics that much now. They just don't. They New- do, but it's not like a main focus. It, it's a footnote. And even, that, even Comics Beat has like video game and movie categories and stuff now. And they probably get more traffic off of that. I probably. mean, Bleeding it's like, Cool. It's like San, San Diego Comic Con. And, you yeah. know, it's just more of a pop culture thing now. Well, that's it. And that's, that's what happened with, with comics in general. They're basically, comics culture is just geek culture. And it's, it's basically a footnote in addition to other stuff. You know, when you're talking about Marvel, most people aren't thinking Marvel comics now. They're thinking Marvel movies or Marvel video games or where the hell, you know, crap Disney's trying to sell. But like Bleeding Cool, I was shocked. Bleeding Cool used to be almost strictly comic books for the longest time. And now they're covering like mobile apps, like golf games and stuff. Because they have to for traffic because nobody cares about comic books. So they're not looking for news about comic books. They just don't care. So this is uh, this is coming from Popverse. Update, the most popular comics awards, the Eisners, drops journalism, but not memoir, as a category for 2024. Uh, pff, wow. Wow. Uh, so they said submissions are open now for the 2024 Eisners. There's, I would like to, to nominate uh, Crimson Run of the True North. Yeah. Nominate, it's just I'm saying. Sorry. But we will never get nominated because, you know, we're the wrong kind of people. No, However, okay. if we did, people would lose their shit. It'd be worth it just for that. We'll, we'll uh, start our own awards show, too, because we have Comics our own. Comics that don't suck. Oh, I was Comics just gonna... that don't suck awards. I was thinking call it the, the Clownies, call it the Stevies. Stevie, maybe. The Bubbly Comics Awards. Comics that don't suck. Comics that don't suck. Uh, yeah, they said there's a slight caveat here. While the Periodical Journalism Award has been left off the submission list, the website also considers the announced categories tentative and states that the judges may add, delete, or combine categories at their own discretion. Uh, the, these caveats are not new additions to the site, and it's definitely worth noting that comics-related periodical and journalism was on the submission list last year. This is not an oversight. But wait, 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 wait. So wait, if the co- categories are tentative, and yes. the, the judges can combine, delete, or add categories. Who does to say that a judge is coming into this? Because it's usually put from the industry who has a lot of fr- – they're all friends with each yes, other, right? Yes, they're all it's friends very, with each other, It's very, you know, circle jerky. Who's to say not, not, to be, not to be not to be Nazi, Nazi jerky? jerky. Yeah. yeah, circle um, jerky. So who's to say that their like friend just put a, a, put out something that didn't fit any of those categories? Oh, guys, I think we need to add this category this year because like there's one comic that everybody thinks of in that category and then they'll win because they're friend. You know what I mean? If you can just add, delete, and combine categories at their discretion, yeah. that's already a little bit sus. I'm just saying. Speaking of sus, I was just thinking the circle jerky is probably extra salty. Right, no, the, right, as after this. <laughs> anyway, when reached for comment, Eisner Awards Administrator Jackie Estrada directed attention to the above caveats and clarified the periodical journalism category has been combined with comics-related book. Writing for comics-related periodicals, 
They have been combined with the comic-related books. Online journalism sites are welcome to submit in the overall category. Yeah, you can submit, but we're not gonna we're not gonna list you. They're burying them. They're not getting rid of it completely, but they are. You know, it's like, oh, you're welcome to, yeah, you're welcome to apply, but you know, we already decided who we want. So they're basically saying, yeah, they're going to combine comic book online websites, uh, with like memoirs and serious studies of the craft. Um, so either they think it's a joke completely. I think comic book journalism is a joke or they're afraid of opening up the floodgates and having a bunch of YouTubers and podcasters and stuff throw in. And then that just becomes a freaking land you know, uh, uh, landmine field. It's, it's awful. Um, landmine fields, you know, littered with landmines because you're going to get the wrong people. You're going to nominate the wrong people. You're going to piss somebody off. And you know, what you're going to do is you nominate somebody and somebody else is mad. They didn't get nominated. It'll go through their entire Twitter history and find yes. one thing that they can misconstrue yes. and say, they said something bad once they should be deleted. I, I'm going to be honest. Anytime you deal with personalities that live mostly like fan communities, that live mostly online. Some of the cattiest, backstabbingest, bitchiest people you're ever, and they they would totally Bitch do that. Bitch is gender neutral, in they my would, opinion. Yeah, it is. Um, to me. To you. But they would do that. You know they'd do that. I mean, hell, they had Scott Kurtz trying to cancel people. Scott Kurtz, who is perpetually online, uh, online, because he's a he's a comic book, or webcomic guy, perpetually online, podcaster, and, and he was trying to get people canceled from going to a comic book convention because he personally did not like their YouTube videos. But I'm like, we see this all the time. You know, they, they have the wrong people at the conventions or the wrong people get nominated for awards. And there's like some campaign to get them canceled. Everett, like the comic book industry, and I'm not talking like the Marvel, I mean, Marvel and DC is pretty bitchy too, but you start getting into the majority of, of what is left of the comic book industry. And it's basically glorified web comics. It's you have a bunch of like Tumblr people working for the IDWs and the Dark Horse. And these people, a lot of them, I'm not saying everybody, but a lot of these people are assholes and they're easily offended and they're constantly looking. So what would happen is they would put, you know, certain websites up or whatever, and they'd be like, You didn't have enough diverse voices in your nominations there, Jackie. We're gonna have to pay you a visit. And actually, I met I met Jackie Estrada once, she was pretty nice. Um, mm-hmm. But she's old school, so she's probably looking at this like, yeah, can this you is the headache she has to deal with. Yeah, like, you know, she she yeah, she's been doing this for a very long time, and I'm like, she's probably looking at the the current comic book industry landscape, and she's like, I do not want to touch this with a ten foot pole, so I'm just gonna quietly uh, tuck journalism into this other category, and then say, well, you know, there are some books out there that were just so much better than your garbage tier website. Sorry. You know, sorry, that's what we're going to do. Because I think she knows. I think a lot, you know, the majority of people working in comics, the ones you don't hear about, the ones that aren't terminally online on Twitter, know what a dumpster fire the industry actually is. What if my website, you know, identifies as a comics related book? (laughs) Is that a count? I'm going to, I'm going (laughs) to print it out. I'm going to, I'm going to take it to Amazon and I'm going to do a create space book. With my Kindle with all or my whatever. Articles. Gonna, Look, it's a book now. Now it's a book. Um, no, I, I just think the Eisner, first of all, was kind of like, it, to me, it, it, it's very, it's very fake and very, um, it's kind of like the Academy Awards of comic books. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And the categories usually, even ones that are like digital comic or web comic, so, somehow seem to be the people that have publishers. Yes. And they still get put in those categories. And, you know, they might not have been the best one out there, the one that should have won, but they have a publishing deal, so they get nominated for that. And we used to see this a lot with digital comics or web comics, or somebody would like take their pitch idea and serialize it as a 12 page something. And as long as they had a lot of check boxes in it, they'd win for best digital comic. And it was like, it, it just became it's a joke. Like, there's people who should have won and never got nominated. And then there's people that, you know, constantly get nominated and win just because they're with such such a publisher. Yeah, it, it became a marketing tool, um, emphasis on tool. Uh, but yeah, it did. And that, that's been a more, I would say within the last like 10 or 12 years, because like the Scholastics in the first seconds and the, the you know, the, the big six, I don't know how many publishers there are now. It's probably only like three, but... But they were all using the Eisners so they could slap on the cover 
that, oh, this is an Eisner winning book to try to sell it. And same Most with, people don't know what the Eisners are unless you're in comic circles. Like, what the hell's an Eisner? Yeah, but it looks impressive to a librarian, right? And they're selling the graphic novels to librarians. So it looks impressive. Oh, we got an Eisner. Hey, fun fact. Fun fact, not just a YouTuber. In fact, I worked uh, predominantly on Eisner winning and Eisner nominated comics uh, during my my tenure as a, a Disney comics person. He never um, got one of the trophies. I never got but one. He did I the never work got on one. it. <laughs> yeah, the company got got one, but uh, I did work on it. So I can say that I could be I could be a douchebag and I could be like, oh, I'm an Eisner adjacent. Eisner Jason. Comic book creator. We're working for, you know, such lauded publishing houses as blah, 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 blah. Well, that's like the uh, the New York Times bestseller list. We were talking about that the other day, and it was like how easily game that is. And that's a publishing tool, too. It's all, you all got- very, it's all incestuous, and it's all uh, one giant, like, chess game. Yeah, it is. They basically, it's very easy. If you want to win the New York Times bestseller list, all you got to do is buy your books from certain places because it's kind of like the Nielsen's where it's just a sampling. As long as you know where the bookstores are that count toward the New York Times bestseller list. And then you also have to realize that they have to like you because um, they it's just kind of a suggestion for them. Like, well, sales are just a suggestion. If we like you, we'll put you on the list, you know? And it, translation, if the publisher, uh, you know, gives us a little payola, we'll, we'll put you on the list. And then they, the publisher can slap New York Times bestselling author Blah, blah, blah. Even if you're only on the, the list for like a week. It's also easily gamed, you know? Yeah. And it doesn't even serve a purpose anymore. I mean, what the hell is even left of comics to, to give awards to? Not <laughs> yeah. journalism. Not journalism. <laughs> so we're going to wrap this up. Yes. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.